everyone. Uh, we work, you know, just as context, we work with K-12 schools, uh, around 8,000 schools in the country, and we provide curriculum and technologies to schools. And I was just very heartened when the Honorable Minister was talking about human resource, because I think that is a human capital of our country is where we all begin, and that's the foundation on which we achieve all our vision. Uh, I think over here there are two large opportunities. Uh, one is uh, not, you know, one is now spoken about quite a bit, the other is not as much. So let me take them one by one. I think one is the question that you asked, uh, Bhushottam, which is how can AI help improve access to good quality education and also improve the quality? Uh, there is work that has started there. Essentially, if we see the demographic of India, we have 270 million school-going children. It's the largest population of school-going children in the world. Uh, an analogy I love to use is if this had to be a country by itself, it would be the fifth largest country in the world. So we have the most number of school-going children in our country. And uh, all of the data shows that our kids are lacking in basic literacy and basic numeracy. And that's a problem that both the government and the private sector has been trying to solve. AI can be a big enabler there uh, because we do have a challenge of lots of children, not enough teachers or not enough skilled teachers. And AI can play the role of both being an assistant to teachers where AI can give a lot of insight and predict which child needs support so the teacher can actually focus more on, uh, you know, personalized support, remediation versus just teach to the averages. I mean, imagine a classroom where instead of the teacher come, just, just coming and giving a lecture to the 50 kids and if they got it, they got it and if they didn't, they just moved on, you know, and that's how at least I remember most of schooling was for us. Imagine a classroom where this teacher already has data and insight about her students of 50 and she knows that in today's class here are the 10 who need help with a particular concept and here are the 20 who need help with another concept and this is how I'm going to split my time. Now that's very powerful. I know often uh, people loosely talk about AI replacing teachers. I don't think that can happen because you know we are all uh, social beings. We need human beings around us. But AI can really power teachers. The other way AI can uh, power learning is to personalize learning directly for students. Uh, India has the biggest challenge of students not being able to read independently, uh, students not being able to apply their learning because they do not have deep understanding. Reading assistants can actually enable that. Imagine a private reading assistant which actually is giving you feedback on whether you've read it correctly or not, whether you've understood it correctly. Imagine an augmented reality uh, enabler which actually allows you to enter the human body and see the skeleton. And those are technologies that are available and democratized. I mean, we are able to bring this to schools in rural areas. Uh, Karnataka is a very large state where we partner with schools. So this is what's possible with AI. The other aspect of this is what uh, the Honorable Minister was talking about, which is, you know, if you imagine all the children who are going to school today, they are going to graduate out in grade 10 in a world which is going to be like this, which is AI is part of their life. I think today we are not sufficiently equipping them with ability to live life with AI. And I think that's a big area where we need to work, where AI has to be very fundamental to, uh, you know, foundational learning that happens in schools. And countries like US, China have made massive uh, you know, movement there. I think it's time for us in India uh, to make that uh, movement. I, that is one place where I, will, I feel there is still a lot of work to be done.